Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna show you how to set up the all new PCSX2 core with RetroArch so you can start playing your favorite PS2 games with RetroArch. Now this is officially available from the Libretro team, but it's only working on x86 platforms, Windows and Linux. And I've had good luck with it, but it's still in alpha, so there will be bugs. And when it comes down to it, if you're really looking for a decent PS2 experience on your Windows or Linux machine, I would stick with the standalone version of PCSX2, but if you want to give this a try and you like keeping all of your emulators together with an awesome little front end like this, we can definitely get it set up pretty easily. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through all the steps you need to do to get PS2 games up and running with RetroArch. And with this core, we still have the ability to upscale, so this is Gran Turismo 4 upscaled to 1080p. And as you can see up in the top right hand corner, it is running at full speed. But this really depends on the power of the PC you're running this on. Now with the machine I'm using right now, I could probably go up to 4K, but I left it at 1080p and I think it looks really good here and I'm getting great performance. So if you're interested in getting PS2 games running with RetroArch, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this set up. There are a few things that you're going to need right off the bat. I mean, the most important things are going to be your PS2 games. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where to get them. I got a few on my desktop in a folder called PS2 games. They're .iso. Like I mentioned, I can't show you where to get them. Just do a quick Google search and you'll find everything you need. The next most important thing we're going to need is a PS2 BIOS. There are several to choose from, but I personally use the SCPH-10000, which is the Japanese BIOS, and this works out quite well for me. If you want to try the European or the US, you can. Just do a Google search and you'll also find this. Now let's go ahead and get this set up. It's actually quite easy to do. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and open up a browser. Links for these will be in the description. First thing we need is RetroArch. If you already got this set up, you can go ahead and skip this. But we're going to grab the 64-bit version for Windows. Like I mentioned, the PS2 core only works for x86 platforms like Linux and Windows. We're going to download this one. Next thing we want to do is grab the standalone version of PCSX2 because this is going to make it a lot easier to get all of the files and folders we need into RetroArch. This automatically creates them. You could always do it manually if you want to, but I recommend just downloading this. So we're going to go to the Windows version, and we don't want the installer. We're going to go with the binary. Now that they're finished, I'm just going to place them on my desktop for easy access. So we have PCSX2 and RetroArch. First things first, let's get those files we need. So we're going to extract PCSX2. You can use WinRAR or 7-Zip. We now have it extracted right here. I'm going to rename this folder here, PCSX2 1.60, might be higher in the future, just to PCSX2. Inside of this folder is the standalone version of PCSX2. We're going to go ahead and run it because it needs to create more files in here for us. We'll just choose Next, Next. It's going to ask us to locate our BIOS, but we don't have it in the correct location yet. So I'll click finish, give me a warning, OK, close it down. As you can see, we have more folders created here, and this is exactly what we need for RetroArch. So in the BIOS folder here, we're going to place our BIOS. Like I showed you, mine's on my desktop, scph10000.bin. It's the Japanese BIOS. And now, we have all of the files and folders we need for RetroArch to get this up and running. They're all right here in this folder that we renamed PCSX2. So what I'm going to do is snap this over to the right hand side. And now we're going to extract RetroArch. We'll open it up. Inside of here, we're going to find a folder called System. Snap this to the left hand side and we're going to place that folder we renamed PCSX2 with all those files and folders inside of it right in our system folder in RetroArch. So there we have it. All the files we need to get PlayStation 2 up and running inside of RetroArch. They're ready to go. We'll back up and now we can actually start up RetroArch right here or we can just create a shortcut, which I usually like to do, place it on my desktop for easy access. 
We'll start it up. On the initial startup, if you've never run this before, it looks a little intimidating, but it's quite easy to navigate. You can either use your controller. It's compatible with a ton of different controllers, but I would recommend an Xbox One or an Xbox One S controller, or you can just use your keyboard. We're not in full screen mode, so from the keyboard, let's press F just to bring it up to full screen. From here, we're gonna scroll down to Online Updater, press Enter or A on your controller, I'm going to update my core info files. I also like updating my assets and database. Now, if you want to back up with your keyboard, press backspace, not escape. It'll bring you back. Go back to online updater, core downloader, and we're going to find that PCSX2 core. So if I press up, it's going to bring me to the bottom. We can scroll here until we find PCSX2, Sony PlayStation 2. We're going to download this core. And it's actually ready to use since we've already set up that folder we needed with our BIOS inside of it. So from here, if we want to start a game, we'll go to Load Content. We can navigate to where our content is. Mine's right on my desktop, so I'll go to my C drive users, username, desktop, and my PS2 games. So from here, let's go ahead and start up. Let's go with Sly Cooper. Press enter. It's going to start the game. We're now running PlayStation 2 games with RetroArch. There's a few little tweaks I like to do here. The system that I'm using right now can handle these games upscaled, so I do want to upscale them. If you're using an Xbox controller right now, you can actually press the Xbox button and it'll bring us back to the menu. If you're on a keyboard, press F1. This is our quick menu for this specific core, the PC SX2 core. Scroll down until we see options. Press enter. From here, we have a few settings that we can mess around with. And the main one that I like messing around with is the internal resolution. Like I mentioned, my system does have enough power to run these games upscaled. So we're going to go in here, take it up to 1080p. If you start lagging out, go down a bit. If you're not lagging at 1080p, you can even try it all the way up to 5K. But I'm going to go with 1080p. We're going to back up with backspace or B on your controller. Another setting that I always like to change is from settings. Scroll down until we see on-screen display. on-screen notifications, notification visibility, and we're going to turn on our frame rate. So up in the top right hand corner, we now have frame counter. So we know if this game is going to be running at full speed. We'll go back to main menu, quick menu, and resume our game, which is Sly Cooper right now. Get my controller ready to go. and We can start playing. We've upscaled the game, we have our frame counter on, and uh, all in all, I've had really good luck with this PCSX2 core inside of RetroArch. Now, like I said at the beginning, I would recommend using the standalone version, but if you want to keep everything together with the RetroArch, which I really try to do with most of my emulators, this is a great option. Give it a second to get into a little bit of gameplay here. And there we have it. I'm using my Xbox controller with RetroArch, playing some of my favorite PS2 games. And performance is really, really good. Not bad at all. I'm super excited about this. Now, there have been little hacked versions around the web where you could get PS2 up and running with RetroArch, but this is now officially available from their repositories, and it's only going to get better from here. You want to exit the game, F1 on your keyboard, or your Xbox button. From the quick menu, you can close the content, or we can just back all the way up with the backspace button or B. Main menu, quit RetroArch. That'll bring us right back to the desktop. So yeah, there you have it. It's actually quite easy to get set up with PS2 inside of RetroArch, and if you've never used RetroArch before, it might seem a bit intimidating. But as you saw in this video, it's really not that many steps to get up and running. 
and downloading that standalone version of PCSX2 is definitely the way to go. That way it automatically creates those files and folders for us that we place in our system folder in RetroArch. So that's it for this one. Really appreciate you watching. All links for everything I mentioned in this video are in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.